Hello everybody, in this episode we're going to be talking about pipe sizing on your potable water supply pipe coming into your residence. Now there's kind of two different things here. You've got code, which is pretty specific, and then you've got uh, kind of the old school plumbing standards. Now what I've noticed in my little research here, um, the plumbing, the old school plumbing standards is kind of a uh, way overkill for what code is asking for. But what I found out is it's kind of cheaper to do it to overkill instead of buying different size pipes and stops. If you just kind of stick with the three quarter and a half inch, uh, you're pretty much going to be all right. But we are going to go over the codes and we're going to go over some different things in this video. All right, so a good place for us to start, I think, would be with our approved potable water tubing. So I got me a little, little list here, a little chart. Uh, lots of different tubing you can use. You can see ABS up there at the top. Uh, you've got your PEX, which is what we use a lot. Um, shoot, I think polybutylene is still on this chart. Uh, but pretty much, if you can buy it at a supply house or at um, a hardware store, you're pretty much going to be dealing with approved potable water tubing because they're not going to sell you anything that's not on the list because they could get in a lot of trouble. So just remember that they're not going to sell you anything bad. But here's our list. All right, moving along, let's start at the water meter. Now, and when you're dealing with residents, uh, just a single family dwelling residence or uh, say a townhouse or a duplex or something like that when you're dealing with you know single family dwellings and you know not an apartment complex just kind of a small residential house all your water meters are going to be three quarter now there is a code for that might be a little blurry but um, it says you have to come in with three quarter now a lot of times we don't do that because it's actually cheaper to buy one inch pipe, believe it or not, because they sell more of it. Landscapers use it. One inch pipe is used for a lot of things. So if it's cheaper to go one inch, we'll go one inch. Now sometimes coming into the house and actually running stuff, we will use uh, some one inch depending on how many bathrooms is. I mean, you get up into four, five, six bathrooms, yeah, we're probably gonna run a trunk line of one inch pipe. Um, which is kind of this example of what we've got going on back here. But now, moving along, uh, the next thing you're gonna see in the code is uh, a flow rate, a distribution chart. Not like I said, I've got my codes here, so I can't see what's up there. Um, so your bathtub, you're gonna have a flow rate of four gallons per minute with pressure of 20 PSI. That's right, what it says up there is right, 20 PSI. Uh, I've dealt with pressure issues with people before in the past and yeah the water company they're gonna tell you anywhere from 20 psi to 80 90 psi coming out of the meter is perfectly fine but if you've ever taken a shower in 20 psi water it's not fun it's barely even coming out of there but that's the code so and then of course it would add up as you go along um, now the next thing you're gonna come to in the code is it's gonna give you uh, your stop size basically your stub out size and got this chart here now if you look at these most of them are half inch pretty much all of them are half inch uh, except for a couple that are three eighths but that's smaller that's smaller than half inch and of course this is you know those minimum standards so there is one on here you see it's three quarter now that's for a uh, urinal. You're not going to see a whole lot of urinals in a residential application, so we're not going to have three-quarter stops, half-inch stops, and three-eighths stops. You can get them, but we're not going to use them because we'd end up paying more because pretty much every stop out there is going to be a half-inch stop. So you can get them in bulk and you can get them a lot cheaper. So that's what we're going to do. Um, now, if you wanted to, you could sit here and calculate all this stuff out and do that bare minimum for everything, but your homeowner's probably not going to like it. You'd be up to code, and then you might have to argue with a builder or an inspector and say, you can't do that. The other plumber did it this way. Although you're right in the code book, 
you got to kind of remember some of those old school plumbing standards and you got to keep up kind of with what the other people are doing. And then, you know, like I said, price comes into factor. So that's pretty much your code stuff. Moving along here. Uh, I did a whole video on how these different systems work, the different methods, the trunk and the branch method, your basic manifold, and then your uh, distribution block. Uh, I gotta be careful not to say brand names. <laughs> but uh, pretty much what you're gonna see in new construction is this uh, trunk and branch method. And this is just an example, uh, but what we like to do is we're gonna take three quarter pretty much all the way across the house. We're gonna take three quarter to pretty much every bathroom group. You wanna, you wanna be running a lot of three quarter. And then when you get to that bathroom group, and what I mean by that is the bathroom the tub, the toilet, the sink, and maybe you've got a, a tub, shower, and two lavatories. It's a whole bathroom group. And then you're gonna choke it down to that half inch and then have your half inch stop. If you're just using half inch and three quarter, it's cost effective instead of buying a whole bunch of different, different type pipes. Now I said earlier, if it is a bigger house, uh, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight bathrooms. We've seen some big old houses that have a bathroom in every bedroom and they're pretty huge. You're probably gonna wanna run your trunk line out of one inch. And pretty much what that's doing is you, you've got your volume under whatever pressure you've got, let's say 75 PSI. Uh, when you choke it down, what you're doing is actually reducing that flow rate, but you're picking that pressure up by choking it down like that. Now. When you're dealing with a flow rate of like eight gallons a minute under 75 PSI, you're not gonna really notice that. It's not, it's not uh, so drastic that you're gonna notice that that's stepping up. Uh, it's just, you're gonna turn the sink on and the water's gonna come out. But that's basically how we do it. Uh, you're gonna wanna run as much three quarter as you can. You're not gonna wanna go halfway down the house and, and drop it down to half inch and then run another 30, 50 feet in half inch. You're losing that volume, that flow rate of water. You want to keep that going, and then when you get to the fixtures, you, you're going to back it down to that half inch. All right, well, I wanted to show you this too. Unfortunately, I don't really have a good place that I can get in with my camera and get you a really good shot on some rough end plumbing here in the training center. But I do have this wall here, and of course, we're using our pegs here. We got some. Uh, that PEX A and we've got some PEX B here, um, just two different kinds. Uh, but you see how there's kind of a trunk line here running with three quarter. And then they picked up this lavatory and they, they teed off with half inch. They didn't step it down yet. We're still running three quarter. And we're gonna run three quarter all the way over um, to here. Now they did decide to step it down right there and that's fine because the only thing they're picking up is another sink. And actually on the side of the stud, uh, they do step it on down to pick up a bathtub down there. Uh, but that's pretty much it. You know, if it was me, I probably would have done this little section here out of three quarter just to kind of balance it out a little bit. Uh, but that's not bad. Uh, kind of an example of how we do things now. If you were in a subfloor or in a crawl space, um, you're going to be drilling through studs or maybe you've got some web trusses or something like that and uh, you're just running right on through them. But just remember, keep that trunk line three quarter at least, uh, depending on the size of the house, and then you're gonna step down when you get to each bathroom fixture. But, all right, thanks guys.